What's up guys, it's Prime Time. And I'm here with you guys uh watching 10 wrestling moves WWE banned for being too dangerous. Now I know I, I think I know it's gonna be on this list. Let me see. You got the curb stomp by Seth Rollins. You have the 450 because Justin Gabriel botched it on Randy Orton. And the um the Gringo Killer or the Vertebrae Batbreaker or whatever, but um that's why that's all I can think of. It's I know it's more, but I can't remember more being used in the W oh oh uh power drivers. Yeah, power drivers. A short while ago, news broke that a consortium of 50 that's ex WWE superstars were suing Vince's House of Winces for cumulative injuries accrued under the watch of World Wrestling Entertainment. Jimmy Snooker, Road Warrior Animal, Paul Orndorff, even Sabu, because yes, he really was the very picture of health before his 12 month WWE run. Point is, though, even though WWE is being publicly taken to task for dangerous working conditions, it has made the effort to curb some of the injuries accrued by its talent. Certain maneuvers that previously weren't are now banned, and some moves are so bad. Crazy that WWE have always said, ha <laughs> ha, nope. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are 10 wrestling moves WWE banned for being too dangerous. Number 10, the chair shot to oh, the yeah. head. Remember chair the good old the days yep. when our favorite wrestlers would grab heavy metal objects and crack them mm -hmm. as hard as possible into the head of your least They will put the rock wrestler. in there when he did well, it. Well, it turns out that's it. actually quite bad for the brain, which is, and this is another spoiler, inside the head. Thanks, science. Who the okay. fuck knew? Yes, turns out the thunderous chair shots of old were absolutely awful for the human body, with cumulative concussions causing horrendous permanent damage and numerous neurological conditions. They are now 100% forbidden in WWE, and to be honest, yeah, no, that, that's fair enough. Number nine, the pile driver, yep. because turns out dudes like breaking necks. Well, the tombstone pile driver still gets busted out by Kane or The Undertaker on occasion, because why don't you tell them to stop? The original pile driver itself, famed finisher of Jerry Lawler and signature move to many, has been pretty much outright banned in Vince McMahon's punch box, lunchbox. The last time it, it appeared it, it was almost... the CM Punch on Cena match in 2013, because those guys were at the point where they could say, and what, you'll f***ing fire me? Ha 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 ha. But yes, ever since Stone Cold Steve Austin has some of his CM best Punk, burning years taken away from him but, uh, by yeah. out Tombstone, the pile driver has been quiet. CM Punk almost got Number paralyzed. eight, the curb stomp. Yep, okay, curb well, stomp. first things first, a curb stomp isn't really that dangerous, at least not when performed by Seth Rollins. More people have been injured just walking across the ring than have been by the architect's former finisher. Kevin Nash. The reasons it was banned were it directly targeted the head, which is a problem in the sports industry, more and more concerned about conditions stemming from concussions, uh, and B, no, was it was seen as two quotation marks dangerous quotation marks for the kids at home. After all, if the kids tried curb stomping each other in the playground, then that is a bit of a PR boo-boo for WWE. Now, of course, most moves, if done incorrectly in the playground, could leave you a bold shade of dead, but there's something about kids stamping on each other's heads that put the win right up WWE. See what happened? Happens. Number seven, the Canadian that, Destroyer. That was well, used now, in WWE? Some beautiful nonsense. They use that in WWE? Destroyer, AKA a pile driver with a front flip attached because why the stupid f not? It's a move that's found a rabid cult following because it looks utterly banal. Why is his pants ripped? made a huge deal about how it can never be counted and also it's dangerous to the point that necks break just by looking at it. Not because of the impact necessarily. The flip actually removes a fair amount of momentum on the head coming down, which is ironic when you think about it because why else would you do the flip? No, it's the amount of cooperation it requires between the two opponents that makes it tricky. Both men have to have their athleticism on hey, the Hey, Austin Creed! The slightest screw up could result in the man being pile driven, landing on his neck at a truly awful angle. Number six, the Kiniku Buster. And speaking of moves that tell next to absolutely Ooh, good yes. themselves, the Kiniku yes. Buster, everybody. Yes. So Samoa Joe seems like a nice man, if that very nice man turned into a potato who wants to kill you. He has a finishing move called the Muscle Buster, where he gathers you Just imagine if he didn't go all the way down, and he just, he just good. sat down. The Kiniku Buster Ooh. is that, but instead of falling backwards, the yeah, instead of falling backwards, you, you just sit on, like on your neck. Stunner. So yep. the victim's entire body weight slams right onto the shoulder with the mm -hmm. neck taking every That's last nasty. Of that impact is a stupid, stupid, stupid move which WWE would never even think of subjecting one of their guys to. Number five, the victory star drop. The next in the f 
Askew Next World Tour, the Victory Star drop is a wretched hive of scum and villainy in the form of a variant on a reverse Frankensteiner from the top rope. But Adam, master and commander of my fluttering loins, I hear you bleed, it's not banned. Bailey and Sasha did a Victory Star drop at TakeOver Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, no they did not. They did a straight up reverse Frankensteiner, which means Bailey's legs were around Sasha's head. This meant Sasha had more release to turn in midair and land as much on her front as possible. If they had done a Victory Star drop, Bailey's legs would have gone under Sasha's arms, giving her a much smaller rotation and slamming her right down on her neck and shoulders. And then Sasha would have died, and then everything would have been a bit awkward. <laughs> Number four, the dragon screw neck whip. Why oh, yeah, do wrestlers yeah. hate necks? So you know Randy Orton's vintage DDT, legs suspended from the middle Don't see Punk. CM Punk used to do that, right? Mad wrestlers in Mad Japan look at that DDT and think, that is adorable. The dragon screw neck whip, and it really, really should. No, John Morrison used to do this, right? His legs are suspended from the top rope, and then no, they John, down he, he, he do, he is from the head around yeah, okay. as they go. Not only are yeah. they coming smack down onto their dome because of the elevation, but their necks are also being twisted around just for extra danger. I'm starting to think that all wrestling should be banned. Number three, the diving headbutt. Still in the general head area, the diving headbutt, as innovated by Harley Race and showcased by the likes of Dynamite. They don't really land on the head Daniel sometimes. Bryan they really land on like the very body. Very dangerous move. After all, it involves hurling yourself into the air and throwing your skull as hard as possible into a person or worse, the mat. Also, look at the above list. Dynamite Kid, wheelchair bound after extensive neurological damage. Daniel Bryan, forced to retire after way too many concussions. Okay. Chris Benoit, had the brain of an 80-year-old Alzheimer's patient when he died, and that's an actual doctor's opinion. Even Harley Race himself, the innovator of the move, has gone on record stating he wished he'd never invented it because of its history of head and spinal damage. Don't be surprised if the diving headbutt quietly disappears from WWE. Number two, the top rope big boot. Because of course it f***ing is. Sid snapped his leg directly in two doing it. Of course it's banned, you idiot. Why are you stupid all the time? And number one, the burning burning hammer. hammer. Oh, the move break your neck. It wow! Only seems right. Yes, invented yes. by Kenta Kabashi. That will that will that will break your neck. The wrestler grabbing his opponent on their shoulders like they're just uh, torture out. <laughs> then they do an inverted death. I, I ain't gonna lie. Bring their opponent right down on top of their head. With that used to be my finisher too. In a full. Even WWE, in Japan, where they do horrendous things to themselves. Smackdown the versus Raw, 2011. Very right. rarely, so dangerous is the move. It was like somewhere so like you couldn't use your finisher, so you had to pick from three finishers. Times, so just seven yeah. throughout his entire career, and no one's ever kicked out of it. It is an apocalyptic move. The proper version is, of course, banned in WWE, but funnily enough, Tyler Rex did a version of the move. It was much weaker. In fact, it was just an inverted attitude adjustment, but they called it a burning hammer, which is an insult to all the Japanese wrestlers who nearly lost their lives taking this absolute lunatic of a move. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments. Wow, Don't forget okay. to like, share, and subscribe. Um, you can follow me on Twitter here. Yeah, pretty I'm much. I said everything on here. I did not know the Canadian... I didn't know the Canadian Destroyer... Well, I knew it was banned, but I didn't know, like... I thought he meant moves that were banned because people did them in WWE. So, because the Gringo Killer should have been on there. Because the Gringo Killer is banned. Even though Seth Rollins did it last week. Well, did it, like, a few months ago to AJ. But... What do you know, right? Read some of these comments real quick. See what some people say. Didn't Sami Zayn and Cesaro recently do a Canadian Destroyer? Yes, they did. Uh, dude. <laughs> Boy. I'm not even going to read that one. Oh yeah, that's what I want to say about the the um the curb stomp. The curb stomp. The only reason why the curb stomp was banned, I know, it's because the kids won't do it. But um, John Cena, he, he'll see with John Cena. John Cena took the curb stomp a lot. John Cena does not know how to take the curb stomp. Like usually, people will go into it and they put their hands right there. John Cena would jump his head until he would jump up until Seth Rollins. Um, foot and then land. I don't I don't it's hard to explain it. But um as for the coup de gras, somebody asked about the coup de gras on here. So judging from the curb stomp, it said that the coup de gras will soon be banned. Yes and no. Um because the the coup de gras should be banned, especially from last Monday when he did it on Rusev, he landed real wrong. Like he landed on Rusev almost like on the crotch area, but it was like in the stomach. 
And that's, that's kind of sick. And if you land on the chest, like, you have to land perfectly to cool the ground perfectly. And I seen him not land perfectly, but it, it didn't go bad. Oh, yeah, he forgot the punt kit. The punt kit was too dangerous, too. It got banned. And contract with TNA was banned for being too dangerous. <laughs> it's funny. What about Dean Ambrose's original Dirty Deeds where you drove your head straight to the mat? Why does he do the double arm DDT now? Because it was too dangerous, so they went to TNA. Because TNA don't ban moves for some reason. And EC3 used it, and it's called the 1%er. I think the gut, the gut Buster should be banned too. What Darren Young does? That ain't look dangerous. <laughs> Anyways.